Hello everyone. Today we are going to study history. The first chapter of history that is tracing changes through a thousand years. Here in this chapter we will be studying about the thousand years journey which we have studied in class 6. The few years which were called as the ancient India and what were the changes through that period in short. Here we can see two maps, map 1 and map 2. Map 1 was made by Al Adrisi. He was an Arab geographer. This map was made way back in 1154 CE. Here in that map, South India is where we would expect to find North India and the Sri Lanka island, Lincoln is island at the top. Places named are marked in Arabic and there are some well-known names like Kannauj and Uttar Pradesh. Whereas in map 2, which was made by a French cartographer nearly 600 years after al adrisis map, that map is considerably matching today's map. It's more, it is more or less familiar to us and the coastal areas in particular are surprisingly detailed. This map was used by European sailors and merchants on their voyages when they visited India. There were some terminologies and we are going to study about the new and old terminologies. Historicals, historicals record exist in a variety of languages which have changed considerably over the years. Medieval Persian, for example, is different, is not just with regard to grammar but vocabulary. The meaning of the words has also changed. The term Hindustan, today we understand it as India. In the 13th century, this term was meant for the areas of Punjab, Haryana, and the lands between the Ganga and Brihamuna, but not South India, by Minaj Siraj, a chronicler who wrote in Persian. By contrast, in the early 16th century, Babur used Hindustan to describe the fauna and the culture of inhabitants of the subcontinent that is India. It was similar to the way the 14th century poet Amir Khusro told about India. For example, a simple term foreigner in medieval terms, medieval period, this term was meant any stranger who appeared say in a given village, someone who was not a part of the culture and society. In Hindi, the term Pardesi might be used to describe such a person and in Persian, Ajnabi. So here we understand that there was a difference between the terminologies, same terms and their meanings. Historians and their sources, that means the sources through which the historians studied about history. The first one is the coins. The study of the coins is called numismatics. They used to study these coins about the period. They used to tell about the period they belong. Second is the inscription. The study of inscription is called the epigraphy, where the historians try to study the original inscriptions. Then the architecture. It could have been Mughal architecture, Rajput architecture, or Dravidian architecture. These buildings the, uh, constructed by those people at that time tell a lot about the period. The fourth one refers to the textual records. Textual record was none other than literary record, something which was written. The literary sources include Literature of Vedic, Sanskrit, Pali, Prakrit and other literature along with other foreign accounts. Through this period, paper
paper gradually became cheaper and was more widely used. People used to write holy texts, chronicles of rulers, letters, teachings of saints, petitions, judicial records, and for registers of accounts and taxes. So paper had become very useful by then. Manuscripts What are manuscripts? The original scripts written by the author in his or his or her own handwriting. These manuscripts were collected by wealthy people, rulers, monasteries or temples. Still, these are the places where they could be found. They were placed in later in libraries or the archives. Now, what are archives? Archives are the places where documents and manuscripts are stored. There were different innovations during that thousand years. First one was the Persian wheel that was used in irrigation. Spinning wheel in weaving, it held in weaving cloth. Firearms in combat, these firearms used for fighting. There were different crops that were being now grown that were potatoes, corns, chilies, tea, coffee, etc. You can see all this, some of them in these images, the Persian wheel, the firearms, the spinning wheels, etc. During that period of thousand years, which we studied as the ancient history, there were different social groups, which could be referred to as Rajputs, Kshatriyas, who, were the, who had the valor and they were the loyalists, the Marathas, Sikhs, Jats, Ahoms, etc. There were social discrimination also done at that time that was based on Jati, that is subcaste, occupation and background. And these Jatis were own rules. Jati Panchayats were also formed. These village was governed by chieftains that were referred as Jati Panchayats. They were formed by the different Jatis in a particular area. There were different regions and empires that emerged. There were different religions that were referred as Hinduism, under which came Brahmanas, the idea of Bhakti. And Islam was divided into two major categories, that was Shia, followers of Prophet Muhammad's son-in-law Ali and Sunnis, the followers of Khalifas. Thinking about time and historical periods, the Britishers divided Indian history into three periods, that was Hindu, Muslim and British. But these were not only referred to as it is as Hindu, Muslim or British. They were better known as ancient, medieval and modern. In the sixth class, you were taught about the ancient history, which we studied in brief just now. And further in this class, seventh, we will be continuing with the medieval history. And in the eighth class, you will be studying about the modern history, which is referred as the British history. So that's all for today. Thank you. Have a